before I start this review, I'd like to just say, well, you know what? I'm gonna say what I have to say without words. <sighs> oh, hello. Just had to relieve some anger. Um, seven seconds. Let's discuss it. Hello, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, get comfortable, girl, get seated. It is today that I am going to review the seven seconds Netflix original that had everybody talking. So let's discuss what the show is about, basically. The show is touching on police brutality and the murdering of black people um, and the police basically getting away with it. This happens in real life, okay? This is a real life situation. Um, for those of you who have watched the show and I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It actually happens in real life. And unfortunately, most of the cops, if not all of the cops, get off uh, with either small charges, uh, small time in jail, or no time in jail at all. So the story is basically wrapped around this young boy who is murdered by a police officer and the entire season is about this police officer and his partners basically hiding this secret and doing whatever it is that they have to do possible to keep it a secret. So in the series we meet our prosecutor KJ. Girl. Let's just call her Wig. Ponytail Wig. I need to speak to whoever was in charge of hair and makeup. Yeah. Maybe not makeup. But hair? Why? Why did they decide that KJ could not afford a new wig? And not even just a new wig, but to be able to take it out of the ponytail. That ponytail stayed in its place the entire season. And we ain't talking about a ponytail. We're talking about a little thin, pipsqueak ponytail. Let me, I need to get comfortable. Hello. I just, I really cannot believe that in 2018, I'm assuming this was shot in 2017, that we are still not getting it right. That hair was wrong. It was so wrong. And there were a lot of times where I couldn't even focus on her timidness or her constant because I was looking at that wig. And then at the end of the season, I guess they said, well, you know, let's give you a little variation. Let's give you a little something different. And they let the little peach drop in the front. Girl, her and that piece. I just, I just wanted to take it off. That's all I wanted to do is grab it and do one of those. A quick one of those will come right off, KJ. Let me help you. This is probably why you're a little stressed out. That ponytail is doing nothing for you. Uh, her character is basically a black woman who grew up in a rich neighborhood. She has all this anxiety and stress. We meet her in a bar. She's singing karaoke, singing karaoke, because I need and she wasn't really doing too much of that. She's an alcoholic. This is how we meet her. She runs in late for her first court appearance of the first one that we see. And she's just disheveled and is a mess, okay? KJ is one big mess. And if you haven't seen the whole season, just to let you know, she'll be a mess the entire season. Nothing will change. All the way up until the last episode, KJ is a mess. Like, even in the last episode, KJ is a mess. There is nothing about her that screams, I want her fighting my case. Nothing. Nothing. Even when you thought she had it together, she still dropped the ball. You know, the one thing I can say about KJ is that she didn't give up on her instincts when she thought something. She would try and figure out, like, okay, what what's going on with this? But, man, she was giving me, like weak 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 carrie hilson olivia pope vibes of course they had to have her have some kind of weird affair with the senator or possible senator of the town and it's just like why <laughs> why now this is what i'm trying to figure out because see because see seven seconds and the creators got me a little <laughs> up, okay they got they got me a little twisted i done seen too many episodes of Law & Order SVU, okay? Because I think in almost every episode, I was like, well wait, why didn't they do this? Oh, what, what, wait, they didn't, you know what I mean? Every episode, I would get pissed off because somebody didn't go as hard as they could have. You know what I mean? Like, don't give up, like, uh, just wait a second. Or like, some, it was something where it's just like, 
Are y'all all slow? What is wrong with y'all? I'm all over the place, but it's just because the show was just... Jablonski and the three other bad cops. See, you thought that Jablonski was a good cop, but he's not. This is not a good cop, bad cop situation. This is bad cop, worst cop, even worse cop, and the devil. These four guys all conspired to hide this murder. Okay, even on first 48, when you got cars pulling in and out and stuff, they be checking them tracks. Like, okay, how many cars are here? That's one of the things they check. How many cars are here? What kind of tracks did they leave? Now we are gonna check the tires. I'm like, this is not how this works, all right? I'm no detective, I'm no prosecutor, but your girl has eyes, and I got a brain, and I have seen Law & Order SVU too many times to have been fooled by this, you know, trying to just be a dramatic series, which is what I ended up feeling like. I was like, you know what? This is that type of show that just creates problems to make the series last longer. Like, after a while, there were some episodes where I was really kind of tuning out, because every episode was about an hour long, and it's like, why are we still here? Why have we still not put two and two together? Why is the mom, Tracy, okay, why is she pulling up to the killer's house and not calling KJ, the prosecutor and the detective and saying, this is where he lives, this is the address. Like, I get that she's supposed to be so just disturbed and, and messed up because her son was just killed. But if you are there to seek justice for your son, at what point do you actually try to do that? Like, it just seems so dramatic for no reason sometimes. I'm like, yo, this is not how this be going, but Okay, you know, there was no point throughout this entire series that I didn't recognize that D'Angelo was a dirty cop. Like, even when he was playing, like he was not that, and he was, you know, he's in the police academy and everybody's joshing around. He gives me dirty cop. And it took them like five or six episodes for them to put together that he was a dirty cop or that he had some shadiness going on or something to do with the situation. And I'm like, wh why? These guys scream dirty cop, like, everything about them screams dirty cop, like, what are we talking about here? It just doesn't make sense. Also, D'Angelo and the neighborhood gang leader, Messiah, they had a relationship, not that kind of relationship, we'll talk about that in a second, girl, because of course they ended up putting a little gay situation in there, which is cool, but I'm like, all right. D'Angelo and Messiah have an agreement where Messiah pays him a certain amount of money to uh, allow him to let them keep doing their work on the streets, you know? The agreement is, hey, you don't arrest us, we not gonna bother you, we, let's all just do our thing, and I'll give you a cut of what I make via our drug money, gun money, whatever it is that they're selling. And so, at one point, D'Angelo meets Messiah, just like in some lot, but it's like, y'all aren't hidden. This is like in the middle of the in the middle of the night and not like late night. We're just talking about in the night. Like there are folks walking around, cars passing by. Like I just didn't understand how this went undetected. Also, when D'Angelo takes Nadine's phone and keeps her phone, it's like, how? It's 2018. Why aren't y'all able to click find my phone? Is there a reason why that wasn't done? Nadine's rich family didn't think, let's figure out where she's at. She was getting all these texts from her mom and nobody clicked, find my phone. Even though it looked like they were working with an Android, but still, I'm sure that they had that feature. It was just too much. So let's talk about the victim's family. The guy's name is Britton. Brinton, it's a hard one. Brinton, Brinton, it's a hard name to say. Brinton Butler. Brinton is basically supposed to be this sweet kid who was just innocently riding his bike through the park and was hit by a cop. So here's the thing about this, like when shows do this, if they don't show me the character, then I don't have any type of emotional connection to them. Like, I understand that the family's sad because obviously like your son was murdered. I'll give you an example. On The Shy, if you've been watching that show or if you've watched um, the episodes that have come out so far, which I'll also be reviewing. The brother who's killed, he's in like the first two episodes, kind of living and doing his thing. So we get to know him, we, we like him, and so we can feel that loss. And we know why that was such a loss. You know what I mean? There's an emotional connection there. And since we didn't really get to know who Britton was, I, and maybe they did this on purpose, so then we could kind of feel the way that the cops felt, where it's just like, they don't know him, 
you know, how the jury felt really, like they don't know Britain, we had to base our feelings on this, even though we know that it's all wrong and like the cops are fucked up. I don't know, that was just another thing that I noted where I was like, I wish they would have taken some time to develop the character and allow us a chance to see the family functional and happy, which they did try and do a little bit with the mom and the dad and then at church. Even though the dad, oh my God, the dad was so annoying. He was so annoying. He was so dramatic and did a lot of these, like, yeah. Thought you weren't coming back again. Like, what? Just, what are you doing? Like, it made my stomach hurt. Like, the man I would never be attracted to type of shit. And his brother. The whole family was just a little odd to me. Tracy, um, and her living in her car in the middle of the winter in New Jersey just was not, just didn't seem like, I was just like, all right, girl. But get a grip though, because guess what? You are not gonna be able to get any answers if you're sleeping in your car and you got hypothermia and then you in the hospital. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Like, girl, let's really figure this out. What we do know about Britain's family is that they were churchgoers. They had a strong family connection. They were very close. But there are a lot of secrets and a lot of resentment that they had towards one another that was never spoken of. Britain's dad is like this, just seems like a, annoying miserable man then we learned that he works at like a slaughterhouse like why a slaughterhouse out of everything this is the job y'all made him have like now i get why he act the way he act he works at a slaughterhouse this explains a lot about him he's not an optimistic person super pessimistic so dry so boring and just like pfft. trees had a lot of hope had a lot of faith up until her son was murdered she didn't want to go to church anymore. She lost all um, reason to live, basically. She just wanted answers. Why didn't y'all just win this case? I felt like it could have been won. There were a lot of moments where I was like, you got the answer. The answer's right there. Do your job. And then she'd go drink about it and be laid out on the floor somewhere. And like, I was so tired of seeing this face. Like, what's wrong with you, girl? What's wrong with you? Apartment looking a mess. You over here dealing with this married man who ain't even nothing, ain't even on your team. Told you don't ever come to my house again. Straight played you. Then you gave him the coochie coo when he pulled up. Uh, and he only he only wanted the coochie coo because you had started winning your case. Also, it got annoying every time somebody was like, "So, what does the KJ stand for?" It stands for nothing. What? What the fuck does it stand for? It definitely ain't Kennedy Johnson. It ain't that. So go ahead and tell him what it stands for. Go ahead, girl. Hurry up. Because I'm tired of this little, you know, secretive old, you know, I'm just tired of her. And then, like, I am curious to know more about her family life and why she's so detached. I did like that they touched on the financial hardship of having someone in the hospital. You know, this kid is dying and the dad still had to figure out how he was going to pay for all of this. And this happened to his son, his innocent child, and these police officers are still getting paid, they're still working, and the son uh, and his family are going through all this hardship. It's like, people don't really understand, and I really don't understand, I've never been through this, but what we've seen on the news, people don't realize that, you know, these people do have to pay for these hospital bills. People get shot and stuff, even if they end up dying, you still have to cut that check. You still have to pay the hospital for housing the victim. And it's really messed up because these cops end up still getting off. And so I do like that they touched on all of that because it is so real and so true, especially within the last couple of years and, and the murders and the famous names that we've heard of, especially the black boys that have been killed, uh, not counting the black women who've been killed, but you know, our black children that have been murdered by police officers or by white men, period, have uh, really just put a stain on police because you know, we, we start to question, are you guys policing? And if you are, who are you there to protect? Are you there to protect yourself or to protect the community? And so, when I see stuff like this, and uh, you know, especially with the narcotics unit and stuff, I just wonder, are there good cops? 
you know, what do y'all think? I'm, I have had experiences with police officers where they have been complete assholes. And I know it's literally because of the uniform that they have on and because they know that they can get away with it. I just, I have not, I've never had a good conversation with a police officer, never. I don't see a lot of good interactions with police officers. And you know, there are a lot of people who have friends that are police and so they like to speak up for them in that, in that way. But you know, how your friend acts with you is not how your friend acts to a stranger who maybe has pissed them off or done something they don't like or looks away or reminds them of somebody who tried to punch them when they tried to arrest them. Like, so just consider that. Yeah, I mean, overall, what am I rating this show? I rate it a solid seven. This is very prevalent within our um, within our generation and even the generations before us. This has been going on. Police brutality has been going on for so long and the murder of black folks by police and them getting away with it has been going on forever. So this is nothing new. It's just sad that there are still ways for them to get around having to pay for killing us. What are my wishes from the show? I wish that they had a stronger black woman on the show. Somebody who wasn't so <sighs> to every last thing. I understood the mom, you know, <sighs> because her son was murdered. That gets you going a little crazy. I, I obviously have never experienced this, but I can only imagine that it'll take you out of yourself. And uh, so her stuff is excused, but KJ, girl, get it together or quit, okay? Enough is enough. So I do wish they had a solid, black woman and also a solid black man all of the men on that show were just annoying and then we find out that brenton is actually gay brenton's gay and they just flung that on us i'm like well why did he have to be gay why couldn't he just be leaving his friend's house i just didn't understand why that had to be a part of the storyline which is part of my reason why I feel like a lot of the storyline was mad forced, just to add some dramatics to it. But I'm just like, the family's been through enough. Now we're gonna make the dad go through all this. You know, now he's over here being a, a typical black father who would be very disturbed by the news of his son being gay if he never knew. Especially one who has no emotional connection with their son. Um, yeah. As far as all the white people on the show, I hated everybody. Like, there was not, I don't like any character of this show. There's not one character that I like, period. Um, and I'm trying to think, 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 think. Nothing. I didn't take away anything from the show but what I already knew. It just frustrated me more. Um, I didn't learn anything new. Maybe the show was created for people who don't understand how white police officers get away with this kind of stuff. But if you turn on your television or if you read a newspaper, if you open your Instagram app, you know. You've seen it, you've heard about it, we're aware. Yeah. A victory couldn't have happened because that wouldn't have been realistic. I think it's only one time has a cop actually gone to jail recently. Has a cop gone to jail for murdering a black man and that was when the cop got caught on camera shooting the guy in the back because he was running away. Um, but you know, we have other people, other police officers who've gotten away with murders because that's how the justice system is set up. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say about this series. It was a roller coaster of emotions. If you haven't watched it, check it out, I guess, if you want to, if you feel like going through all that. But you definitely will get frustrated and you will be annoyed. Fair warning. So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Also, hold up. Before I close out, is there a reason why you haven't liked the video? I I'm just curious because, I mean, like, you're here, you're watching it. You could just like it. That's all you gotta do, just ding. What You know, I don't know if you have a mouse or if you got the pad, just like it, okay? Like it and subscribe, don't miss out. Uh, I hope you all have a amazing week and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.